What is up everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the altar again and this time after five long years we return with Jason Evans of the Almighty and Jested. It is great to be able to talk with you. Thanks for coming back on the show, man. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Thank you. Yeah. It's nice to be here. <laughs> it's nice to have you back. The last time I spoke to you, it was on the tour that you guys did in 2019 with Despised Icon and Kublai Khan. So it's yeah. been quite a minute and since the last time i saw you i mean a level above human we were still promoting that at, at that yeah. time but since then you released uh where only uh gods may tread you may you released ashes lie still and now we got this brand new album now out now the tide of death and fractured dreams this is a fantastic ingested album was there sort of like a vision that came into mind because since i spoke to you last when you compared like a level above human to the three albums and the eps that you put out in between them there's a chronic evolution i think it's fair to say you guys have been on a real creative surge right yeah absolutely i mean we've since the very beginning um i i think at least um all of our albums have always been like a step up every single time we've We've, because the thing is, we've we've grown as uh, as songwriters and performers as through our career as we've as we've wrote albums. So, and obviously, your tastes change as well. You get into new things. You're inspired by different things and stuff. So, every every album that we've done has always had new elements, new new sounds, new things that we've never done before. Um, and I think what that does is that gives every single album its own personality. I mean, they all sound like ingested. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like when you hear it, you're like, oh, that's ingested. But each album has its own character because I don't, I don't think we've ever like retread old ground. We're always like moving forward. And um, the best the best way I can describe it actually is so when we released our first album when we when we wrote that album we were eighteen years old and we had this let's say we had this toolbox this ingested toolbox and in that toolbox there was only one tool and it was a giant fucking sledgehammer <laughs> which was amazing for the time yeah and it did the fucking job that we wanted it to do but as we've as we've wrote each album as we've as we've grown throughout our career each album we've added another tool to the toolbox we've added different tools and then what what's happened is now 18 years down the line we're here at the tide of death and fractured dreams and now we've got this toolbox this ingested toolbox that's got fucking loads of tools in it loads of different tools for different jobs which like which frees us up to to write loads of different types of death metal well I, i've always said that like your discography is almost like an rpg video game where like you start <laughs> off with the sledgehammers maybe your first weapon and then you level up and then you get like different tools in the toolbox and you know i mean i hope you guys don't approach the final boss anytime soon because <laughs> but like i i feel like i mean when you compare uh surpassing the boundaries of human suffering to now like there is a chronic evolution i mean was this always the vision that you had in mind for ingested when you were recording you know um or even like with the sinking cesspool ep and stuff or was it almost like this was the vision you all had in mind to get to this level now or did it just kind of happen that way can you almost no, dictate just, your own evolution it just, it just kind of happened it just kind of happened like we've we've always been a band that writes music for us for ourselves like we've never we've never been the type of band that worries about oh will the fans like this oh is this song gonna get us on the radio are we gonna get a million likes like with this song like do you know what i mean like oh Oh, will the magazines like this song? Like, no, we've never given a shit about any of that. Like, we've just done it because we love doing it. And we just want to write stuff for us. And the fact that we've got fans all over the world that love what we do is fucking incredible. Do you know what I mean? But first and foremost, we just we just write music for us. We just write what we want to hear. We're just like, oh, this would be cool. Do you know what I mean? And then um, it's just kind of it's just kind of happened like as we've as we've I've, as we've traveled through our career like we've just 
we just go, oh, let's write, let's write. So, oh, this this is going to sound sick. Like, yeah, this will be sick. Do you know what I mean? That's that's always what it is. It's always, oh, this will be sick. Like, that's that's our that's our mindset when we're writing music is just, is it going to be sick? Like, do we think it's sick? Right, cool. Um, but like I said, it's like we've just been able to add more things as as we've developed ourselves as songwriters and as as we've got better at what we do like because we're still like this is the thing like we're we've never been the most technically gifted do you know what i mean we've never been like those virtuoso like uh musicians or anything we're just three working class lads part of the headless uh okay yeah you just you just love death metal (laughs) you weren't part of the headless uh guitar uh trend no no we've never been that but we've never tried to be that either we're just like does it sound sick and that's it like (laughs) that's that's it but like um yeah like i said like we've just been able to to try new things Mm -hmm. um as we've journeyed through our career and just got got better at what we do like um but it was never it was never the vision to to uh oh well you know we want to get we want to get to this point where we can write songs like that that's never been that's never been a plan it's just always does it sound sick mm-hmm. that's always what it's been since the beginning mm-hmm. like since since we were 18 years old mm-hmm. but like just writing slam death metal like we were just always wanted to make what we thought was the sickest fucking death metal like and that's still what we do now now we're all in our fucking mid to late 30s now we're all just still like yeah it's gonna be sick like that, hey, that's it <laughs> hey I, I still see the guys in deicide and morbid and cannibal corpse fucking killing it uh and you know they're some of them are pushing 60 so it can be <laughs> fucking done um and you know th- this is a life that you can't just simply give up. It's ironic. It's death metal. It's a genre about death, but it seems like it can't die. So yeah, and it's it, immortal. Exactly. And isn't that what? Isn't that what we're all doing it for? Like, do you know what I mean? It's about immortality, isn't it? It's about legacy. It can't be about money because <laughs> yeah, we're def- making death metal. Like, do you know what I mean? Def- it's definitely. very rare that you'll be a fucking death metal band that. That fucking makes fucking millions or whatever. Yeah, but never say um, never. Never say never. No, never say never. Never say never. But like, I like. Do you know what I mean? That's not. That's not something that's important to me. It's about immortality. It's about legacy. It's about leaving something, leaving a lasting impact. Well, do you on a scene that means so much to you? Do you know what I mean? Leaving something that when, when this band's over and when I'm dead and buried. Like my kids and my grandkids can like go online and go watch videos of us I and lo- go fucking hell, granddad was a fucking badass. Like I can't wait I mean? for like the generations to come. You know, like when I was a little kid, I'd be like, look, I found a picture of grandma when she was young, and it's like you know her in like a school dress, like like you know very like proper stuff, and then like fast forward a couple generations look i found a picture of grandpa when he was young and it's like him in corpse paint and yeah yeah well that's what i'm saying like do you know what i mean because it, what it does is it it gives you immortality it means that like even when you're gone you're not you're not gone yeah you'll always be there you you made it you made an impact on something you guys which bring, is like a wild feeling like do you know what i mean you guys have brought new life to death that's how i uh, consider ingested to be and thank you when it comes to like all of your albums too because i feel like every um album is almost like a statement in a way the architect of extinction you know where only gods may dread like it almost seems like you create almost a setting or almost kind of like a statement with your albums does lyrically or even musically, is it all coming from an internal source of inspiration or are there a lot of external sources that you channel into your music? There's a bit of both, really. It's a bit of both. Obviously, like, at the start, with, like, our first album, it was, oh, I want to be, want to be the most violent, want to be the most gory, want to be the most offensive and disgusting, do you know what I mean? But, like, now it's about... I can... Well, for, for example, I can only write a song if I'm inspired. Do you know what I mean? I can't just force lyrics. That's that's always been something that I I can't do. I can't just sit down and go, oh, I have to write this song. Like it just comes when it comes. Um so and for that, like I'm inspired by 
thoughts and feelings and things that are going on in here. But then I'm also inspired by like everyday experiences and things that I witness and things that I see and maybe things from like, you know, from like my, my childhood and shit. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like all of those things that are personal to me is what inspires me to write lyrics. And then, but obviously because that because they are personal to me, I don't want to be so fucking on the nose with it. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm like, I'm quite, quite a private person when it comes to like, you know, my personal life and stuff. Um, so it's like, I don't want to be so fucking obvious, but obviously I do want to get it off my chest. So it's like, I have to like find that balance where I can take something that's real to me and then then skin it with like the fantastical. So it's kind of more metaphorical. So it's like, I know what the song means to me, but when you listen to it, for example, you might take a different personal meaning from it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's quite important because whenever I've like connected with a band or a song, like on a, on like a deep level, uh, say like, say like I'm, say like I'm having a rough time about something or whatever. And then a song comes along and I listen to it and I read the lyrics and I'm like, oh shit, that like, you know, like that's kind of, I feel like that kind of applies to what, what, what I'm going through at the moment. Like, and then you, you, you form this bond or this connection with, with that song and that band. And then that's like something that can't really be broken. You like remember that forever. And it's like important to you. And, and I think that's such a good feeling. And being in a being in a band, you don't really get that many opportunities to like give back to your fans, you know, because they they support you and they they spend money on tickets and albums and merchandise and stuff. And that's the stuff that keeps keeps the lights on at home. Do you know what I mean? That's like what keeps a roof over my wife and kids' heads and keeps food in the bellies and shit like that. And to be able to give back in like in any small way, whether that's like anything, like whether that's like them finding solace or finding help in a song that they feel that like that like applies to whatever situation they're going through. And then, you know, if that helps like even 5%, like that's, that's a way that I can give back. And that's like a really important like feeling to me. Do you, if you but- know what I mean? But with the inspiration, you said you only write when you're inspired. And I heard a mm. quote from a from a tattoo artist I had who told me that if she only tattooed when she was inspired, she wouldn't pay her rent. And mm-hmm. do you believe, though, that the inspiration, could you go looking for it? Do you almost seek out the inspiration in a way? Or do you just kind of have to, like, let it strike you? Um, Sometimes. Sometimes. But, like, usually it just... Because of what I'm inspired by... It's like, it's not hard to find inspiration, if you know what I mean. Because I mean, you just look around, do you know what I mean? And we like have you just so look around, it's like I'm inspired by life. Like I'm inspired by the things that go on around me. I'm inspired by hopes and fears and things like that. And a lot of the time, all I need is a really good fucking riff and then like whatever is going on in here will just spill out onto the page. Do you think we'll ever run out of riffs? Do you think we'll... Uh, no. <laughs> ever? Because no. most bands I've interviewed, whether they're death metal, whether they're black metal, they're metalcore, or they're just soft... Uh, hell, I'll just even go as far as to say butt rock. All say, mm. yeah, it usually starts off with a riff. I'm like, how many riffs could there be <laughs> on a single instrument? <laughs> well, that's the thing in it. That's the thing in it. But like, I don't know. Uh, the way that Sean writes... Uh, I don't think he'll ever run out of riffs. Fair he's right. just always writing, like all the time. Fair like right. whenever any sp- any spare time that he has, he's just on his guitar, like writing songs, r- like structuring songs, writing riffs. Yeah. He writes lyrics as well. Me and him handle like fifty percent of the lyrics nowadays. So it's like, 
we'll mm. never run out of material. We've got so much material, it's insane. As We've some, got Dropbox full of it. <laughs> as somebody who's seen Ingested Live many, many times, I do think that it's always a very emotional experience too. I feel like Ingested is like a very emotional death metal band. The last time I saw you guys was on the Lorna Shore gig from 2022. Um, yeah. And I hope to see you guys again soon. But like, uh, it's... Um, really just a truly um, cathartic experience. Do all of the members, when it comes to either performing together or writing together, need to kind of be in the same emotional headspace to make the songs sound consistent? Or could your different thoughts or different experiences maybe help add contrast to the sound? I think, I think the differences in our personalities and our emotional states is what what makes it work like i'm a very how can i describe this i'm a very uh i want to say i'm very emotional like but i mean like things bother me a lot like do you know what i mean like so like i'll i'll be bothered by things a lot whereas lynn and sean might not be so bothered and stuff and I think like we all perfectly counterbalance each other. But when we get on stage, <laughs> is this, I don't know, like it's like this unified intensity that we all share. So although we're very, we're different people off stage, when we get on stage, it's like there's a flip that switches and then all three of us are like, in the same space like like it's it's wild it's so weird it's like i feel like a different person when i'm on stage i feel like i mean like i said my favorite quote at a live show happened at an ingested show is when you guys played the king's land in 2018 i forgot who else was on the bill i know i am was on the bill but uh yeah. I, for, I forgot who else but i i told you i, I remember mentioning this to you when, when i interviewed you in 2019 i was out for a cigarette and i just heard security while you were playing Oh my god, the wall is missing. <laughs> and I'm like, how does the wall go missing? The wall doesn't just go missing. The like, wall went the wall went missing. <laughs> like, I don't know Someone what the smashed the wall. Like, what the fuck did you guys have the audience do? <laughs> well, this is it. This is it. It's like I want whenever we play live, I I want when we're finished, I want people to basically be like what the fuck just happened? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, holy shit. Like, that is what I want. I want people leaving gobsmacked, happy, like feeling that they have been given all of their money's worth and more for the ticket price. That's what I want. Like, and um, I like, I like to do that by delivering the most intense performance that i can because i love doing it as well like this is the thing this is the thing it's like like i said like when i get on stage it's like it's like i'm a different person i don't feel the same like i don't feel how i feel now like i feel like i'm a completely different monster do you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> like, well like I mean... that's what i feel like and i feel like it's like there's no It's, it's it's a hard it's a hard feeling to explain it's like when i get on stage i turn into someone else or something else and it's like i'm not in control of that <laughs> well Do you know I, what I mean it's like i'm watching it happen I, well, I and it's like it's fucking bizarre well, <laughs> i spoke with scott uh, from carnifex and he tells me that like with his cinematic background and his interest in film that in carnifex he almost kind of like portrays a specific character in mm. a way do you almost because i could tell that you almost kind of like go into a specific state of zen when you do play live i mean the first time i saw you guys uh was summer slaughter 2016 and there was a lot of like emotion like i guess for lack of better words do you almost portray somewhat of like an alter ego or some sort of external metaphor of who jason evans personally is i don't know i think it's not i guess i guess i am portraying it but it doesn't feel like a like a portrayal 
Like it feels like feels more like a possession. <laughs> That's a great it's quote. Like, Portrayal I mean? or possession. Portrayal yeah. or possession. But Write that shit down. That's what it is, though. That's what it feels like. Because it's like, it's like summit. It's like summit goes just before we go on stage, and then from that moment, it's like I'm watching myself in the third person. If you know what I mean, yeah. it's like somebody else, and it doesn't. And it's like I don't feel like me. It's so weird. Like it's such a bizarre. Like I could tell you're. It's like you I think it's like I don't know whether that's like. Maybe that's like something psychologically that I have to do, to get to, where I need to be to perform. If you know what I mean, do maybe you, that's what that is. Do you look at music as more? And I have a few more questions for you, but do you look at music as somewhat of like an escapism in a way? Are you using it to sort of like escape? You, your daily life or your, or your daily who you are or is it almost like an extension in a way of who you are is it almost because I could tell that the music is still coming from your own heart but you're one of the chillest people I've met in this whole uh, death metal in this whole death metal universe so like do you almost feel like maybe this is somewhat I, I guess again more of an escapism from your everyday heart I think I think it's more of an escapism from myself if you know what i mean like rather from like my everyday life i think it's more of an escapism from myself um i think it's a way a channel like a lot of like negative feelings that like i have um it's like growing up like um i wouldn't say i was like uh, growing up like I had a lot of like aggression and shit and I had a lot of like pent up frustration and I was bullied a lot and uh, I think being doing what I do now is my way of well, it's, it's, it's an avenue that I can channel all of those like aggressive thoughts aggressive feelings like negative emotions like i can channel all that into that avenue and release it in a positive way do you know what i mean because it's like i look at like a lot of a lot of the, the people that i grew up with like and that i went to school with and shit and see how their lives have gone not not great do you know what i mean and I'm glad that I can, I can channel all that sort of shit into something positive so that in my everyday life, I can enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? I can enjoy my everyday life. I can, I can, you know, be a happy person well, because I don't have any of that shit going on in here because I put it all in there. <laughs> you led me perfectly you know I mean? into oh, a question I wanted to ask you because in the end, darkness is the fuel behind this fire, whether it's you guys or mm. whether it's death metal, black metal. I mean, darkness and, you know, chaos and intensity is the fuel to the fire that creates this amazing art. And I've always said that in the songwriting process or even in the live performance, that sometimes artists can become victimized by their own product in a way where mm. you know like and then this is a dark form of music there's no denying that do you feel that maybe that when that dark energy is the fuel to your fire is there almost kind of like a way of managing it because you don't want the creative process to also be just as deteriorating as it can be cathartic you know yeah um i think i think the way that i think the way that i i do it works for me um I can't like obviously I can't speak for like other bands or other artists, but for me, um, it just works. It works like do you know what I mean? I mean I'm a human being. Like at the end of the day, we've all got we've all got shit going on up here. Do you know what I mean? And in in your heart and stuff. And it's like just to be able to like get a hold of that and control it and make sure that it's being used in a positive manner. Do you know what I mean? And that in a positive manner that other people can benefit from as well. Because it's like 
you can have all these negative feelings and things like that and i think like you see it you see it all you see it everywhere like you know some people don't don't manage that correctly and then they're the people who are out ending up in fucking prison or dead or worse or do you know what i mean and it's like i think being able to to channel it in the way that i'm able to channel it um uh, and then make it positive for not only for myself but for other people so that people can people can listen to our music at home or they can come to a show and they can have that release of those those like that that aggression and the, those negative feelings and shit and you can you can release it in a safe space do you know what i mean where what? everyone's on the same page where hey yo we're all here for the same reason like we're all in the pit do you know what i mean yeah. just take care of each other go nuts and then at the end of it we're all shaking hands do you know what i mean like i think that's like i think it's i think it's something that's that's not only amazing it's something that's so unique to our to our culture and well, our community well you led me perfectly into the final question i wanted to ask you because one thing that i noticed you know one thing I loved about doing these interviews and kind of like networking and being involved sort of in the scene is, you know, as a, you know, as a young teenager, I heard stories about the metalcore movement and I've heard stories about the hardcore movement. So I feel like now I'm almost witnessing, <laughs> I'm almost witnessing a, a movement uh, happening now, but it's so universal. For instance, Carnifex is from the West Coast. Lorna Shore is from the East Coast. You guys are from the UK. Fulfudinia is from South Africa. You have Cabal from Denmark. You have all of these, you know, you have plenty of bands from Thy Art from Australia. So it almost seems like that this is a brand new movement, but it's not like the Massachusetts metalcore scene where Kill Switch and Shadows Fall and all that remains were all from the same area or, yeah. you know, or the, you know, a bunch of bands coming from this region. It almost seems like that this style of slam death core, whatever the trend may be, really seems to be all happening all around the world at the same time. Yeah, but I think that's I think that's because of the times that we live in. Because if you think back, like all throughout, like the history of metal, whenever you've had like a new genre pop up, like a new movement, a new scene. It's, it used to always be centralized in a certain, in a specific area. Do you know what I mean? You had the Bay Area thrash movement. You had the fucking Tampa fucking death metal movement. Then you had the, the New York fucking hardcore. And then you had grunge in Seattle. Like, do you know what I mean? You had all these, these specific um, areas. But I think that was because back then there was no internet. There was no internet. Like nowadays, it's like the internet has basically made everything global. At the, yeah, at but the click of a mouse. Like so now it's like rather than like what would happen organically, like back in the day where it's like, oh, a couple of guys who were all friends and they both got a couple of bands and they're all like making the same kind of music in that one area. Now it's like you'll get a band that starts making music in one area in, in the world. They'll put their music on the internet and then someone in fucking Timbuktu or wherever will fucking listen to it and then they'll be inspired and they'll make a band that's like making the same music. Do you know what I mean? So oh, I think no. it's like, it's, it's, it's so much, it's way, it spreads way quicker is what I'm saying. Yeah. I just, Do you know what I mean? So now it's like, now it's like, yeah, what would be in a centralized area that area is now the entire world well and i think it's, it's also connected and more people look i mean volvo dinia plays here in north america and they are just as it's just as much of an exhilarating experience as when you guys are playing or when yeah. lorna shore is playing i think it really uh in the end and what i think is also amazing about this genre is that i've seen you guys play at the king's land where everybody's on top of each other but i've also seen you guys play at Gramercy Theater, where you yeah. create an atmosphere as well that is just as much of a good experience. I don't think that the ingested experience changes based on the venue, whether barricade or no barricade. Absolutely not. Like for us, it's like we're always gonna be ingested. We're always gonna be the same. 
whether there's five people in the room or five thousand people in the room makes no difference to us yeah and yeah. i don't give a shit yeah like it's always going to be the same yeah and from surpassing um, to now i think it's still yeah. ingested but it's and it's a remarkable listening experience that the evolution that's demonstrated <laughs> but i think in the end you're right it, you, the, the roots are always there i still feel the same sensation when i see you now as i did back in summer slaughter 2016 when i first saw you guys amazing well i appreciate that like we're a, we're a band that that we we will always revere and love our history and our roots and where we've come from but we're always looking forward to the future but we use our history we use our past to fuel our future that that's fucking amazing you got to make a t-shirt for that <laughs> bonus speaking of t-shirts bo- that bro <laughs> bo- bonus question bonus question the unreadable band logo things in this genre is it yeah i'm just wondering the way that bands like to one up each other by being heavier and heavier than the other is that just the new thing now we're trying to do and let's one up each other by, by making our logos more and more unreadable uh, um uh, i'm just wondering uh, that, that's some that's some the logo thing some of that came from like the uh like the brutal death metal and the slam scene in yeah. like i don't know like maybe like the i just love 2006 it 2006 onwards like because it's like that but that that is definitely like that was definitely a thing it was it was definitely a thing like people trying to be oh this is the most unreadable thing but like for me it's like your logo is your brand your logo represents your band do you know what i mean so it's like it's all it's all good and it's funny and shit like you know having like an unreadable fucking messy logo and shit but if people don't see your if it's not a, like a recognizable shape like <laughs> do you know what i mean like well, it goes- it, it, no one's gonna no one's gonna fucking remember it like <laughs> and i think like as a death metal band your logo is such an important part of your band's personality it's like it's like fucking adidas or nike do you know what i mean it's like you recognize that straight away you know what that is so it's like i think with with being in death metal with with merchandise being such an important part of a band's income like because mer- merch is mer- like selling t-shirts is what is what what pays your bills like do you know what i mean that's such an important part so it's like your your logo is like so integral to like your your band's success like and, and people think like oh you can just like have any old logo. it's like no no if you're like one of these bands that get that get that you know that moment that lucky break and it's like oh well then you can put any old shit on a t-shirt and it doesn't matter because you'll sell loads yeah but for a band like us where we are it's like all our merch has to look amazing do you know what I mean? It, it's super important. So it's like for us, the logo is like, the logo is like of paramount importance. It has I'm, to be a recognizable shape. You have to kind of be able to read it. Like, well, that's but it the has thing. to be recognizable. That's the ironic thing about the whole thing. I took like a, I took like a graphic design courses, and like the principle is, you got to keep it simple. You got to keep it simple. Yeah. You got to keep it simple. The logos for any band in this genre are anything <laughs> but simple. Yeah. But like. I recognize it. That's the ingested logo. That's the blood incantation logo. That's the yeah. Carnifex logo. Like it's insane. Like I just think it's one of the most humorous and one of the most like but one of the most interesting things at all. And as a tattoo apprentice, I could tell you that your logo was very helpful in practicing my fundamentals. Yes. As well. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because it's symmetrical. Fair enough. It's symmetrical. It's that symmetrical. Volvo like, Dinia's logo. <laughs> yep. yep. It's if anybody who wants to be a tattoo artist practice band logos it works it works yeah. great i want to start a tribal tattoo trend where like people just get full sleeves of band logos and it makes yeah. it like putting jested over here volvo dinny over here maybe blood incantation over here maybe torturous inception over here like <laughs> like sort of yeah that'd be sick <laughs> but, but before we go i want to thank you so much for your time today i know you've got a lot of press lined up is there just some anything else with ingested you'd like to promote before you, you know? um i mean we've got the album tied to death and fractured dreams coming out on april the 5th through metal blade records so pre-order that pre-order it pre-order it we've got loads of fucking 
cool merch packages and shit. Like, all of them look amazing. We've got vinyls with different variants and shit. They look cool as fuck as well. Um, we've got the two new singles, Paragon of Purity and Pantheon, which have got music videos out right now. Um, the music video for Pantheon, I personally made all the props and did all the special effects for that. So check that out because that would make me very happy because I put a hell of a lot of work into that. Um, and then we've got the UK and European headline tour, uh, which runs through April and May. Um, we're taking out Volvidinia, uh, we're taking out Fallujah, uh, Melancholia. Tickets for that are flying out. So if you haven't got tickets, you better get them before you can't because it's going to be a sick tour. And then and after that, we've got, well, we've got we've got a few more tours lined up, but I can't talk about them yet because they haven't been announced. So <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I turn the camera off, you'll tell me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Every, but thank you so much, everybody. We are here with Ingested. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we will see you next time.